uh, because in Florida, you know, it is against the law to mislead and to misrepresent, particularly when you're talking about the efficacy of a drug. Uh, we see just the other, uh, just recently, Florida got $3.2 billion through legal action against those responsible for the opioid crisis. And so it's not like this is something that's unprecedented. So today, uh, I'm announcing a, a petition with the Supreme Court of Florida to impanel a statewide grand jury to investigate any and all wrongdoing in Florida with respect to COVID-19 vaccines. And we anticipate that we will get the approval for that. Uh, that will be something that will be impaneled, most likely in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, and that will come with legal processes that will be able uh, to get more information and to bring legal accountability for those who committed misconduct. Um, what did you learn today in hearing, again, these voices, many of them suppressed or people ostracized over the last few years? Well, Laura, like anything, I mean, you, you take an MNRA shot and the way to view it is, okay, what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks? And it seems like our medical establishment never wanted to be honest with people uh, about the potential drawbacks. And so you showed a clip from Dr. Latipo down here in Florida and the analysis that he's done with people, particularly young men who've taken the mRNA shots. We, of course, had witnesses talk about their experience. And how are we in a situation? Yes, Florida, we banned vaccine passports almost two years ago. We banned uh, the shot mandates for jobs and saved a lot of people's jobs. Nevertheless, throughout our country, you still have hundreds of universities in other states that are still mandating these boosters on these college kids. When any type of cost-benefit analysis would say the benefit from them taking the shot, as you, as you alluded to, it doesn't prevent them from getting infected or spreading it anyways, the benefit is minuscule. Uh, but as Joe Latipo and other studies have shown, you know, there is a risk for doing it. So why can't our medical establishment acknowledge that? Why the deception? Why have they continued to do this for two years? I want to read some of the reaction to your move today. New York Magazine's Jonathan Shait said, it's been very, very obvious that Ron DeSantis was courting the anti-vaccine movement. It's a case study in conservative movements, intellectual dysfunction. And similar nastiness from Vanity Fair, taking your authoritarian ambitions to the next level. He demonizes public health safety measures to score political points. Uh, Governor, is your goal with this roundtable today to demonize public health and safety officials? Well, let me tell you this, Laura, the authoritarians were the ones that wanted to mandate the vax on people. I protected people from having that happen and made sure Floridians could make their own choice. The authoritarians wanted to institute a vaccine passport system, almost like a social credit system, so that people who dissented from this would be marginalized from society entirely. We rejected that um, and we banned it. So we were, from the very beginning, you know, helping people make their own decisions, uh, but not using either the coercive power of the state or allowing big corporations uh, to condition those choices. And so, look, at the end of the day, um, what we're looking for is to provide truth, to provide accurate data, and provide uh, uh, accurate analysis. And we had a great researcher from Denmark. You know, Laura, Denmark does not allow people under 50, unless they have pre-existing conditions, uh, to get the MNRA shots because they've analyzed it uh, and said that the drawbacks outweigh uh, the benefits. But they've also looked at all-cause mortality, and the researcher found that yes, in some age groups, there was a decline in COVID mortality after taking these, but there was then an increase in other types of mortality. So why have we not seen big declines in excess mortality uh, since these things have been introduced? And so uh, we have now a panel that we've created in Florida um, that is effectively uh, going to function the way a CDC should function and basically do evidence-based medicine, uh, take studies seriously that, that counter the narrative um, and be willing to ask questions and go where the data leads. 
again in a potential 2024 showdown, winning by 14 points in this new poll from the Wall Street Journal among likely Republican primary voters. DeSantis has an even bigger lead, more than 20 points in the survey that we showed you just yesterday. That one was from USA Today and Suffolk University polling.